Gary McGregor on the roads, Bridges and Flood and coordinator um, at Place Services within Falkirk Council. As the, the slide say, states, please keep your microphone on mute until the, the question and answer session. Um, and just for note as well, the, this event will be recorded and placed on the, the council website. So a quick run through of tonight's flood study public information event. So I'll go through a quick round of introductions from the, the council team and, and I'll pass you over to Hannah later on to, um, for the same same thing on the ACOM side. We'll look at the, the background um, of why we're, we're holding this public information event and looking at the flood study. Um, we'll look at next steps and we'll have a, a question and answer round as well. So as I stated, my name is Gary McGregor. Um, I'm Roads Bridges and Flooding Coordinator within Falkirk Council. Um, also assisting me tonight are, are Lee Martin, the Senior Flooding Officer, and Holly Easton, our Flooding Technician. We also have ACOM, who are our, are our Flooding Term Commission um, and have been since 2018. So a little bit of background, most of you will be aware um, of the, the events in, in Westcourt over the last number of years. Um, so there's been several flooding events over the last few years, most notably surrounding Langton area. Um, and in response to this, Falkirk Council was confirmed within the, the fourth estuary local flood, flood risk management plan um, to carry out a flood study of the West Quarter burn through the village of West Quarter. In the spring of 2021, ACOM, um, who are Falkirk Council's Flood and Term Commission, were appointed to carry out the flood study, which will look at the flood risk from the West Quarter burn. Um, and obviously the purpose of this event is to inform members of the public, local members and any other relevant stakeholders on the current phase of the West Quarter burn flood study. So there, there was obviously an initial public information event in 2021, um, which I hadn't started as in my current role as of yet, so but I, I'm aware um, and have watched the, the rerun of it. So we started. So um, first and foremost, I'd like you just to stay, like I said, keep keep yourselves on mute. Um, I'll pass you over to ACOM. Um, I'll let Hannah um, share their presentation and then we can we can take it from there. Thank you, Gary. Just wait till Morag shares presentation. OK, excellent. Um, thank you for that introduction. And yeah, we'll go through some of the bits of background as well from the last event. Uh, so um, Morag can go to the next slide. Thanks. Yeah, so my name's Hannah and I'm project manager on the project. And with me today are Scott, our engineer on the project, and Morag, who's our technical lead. I'll hand over them to them to do the presentation now. Um, so just a little bit of um, study background. We went over some of this in the, the last public consultation, but just in case anyone couldn't make that one. Um, West Quarter was identified um, by SEPA in a potentially vulnerable area um, based on their high level mapping um, and also um, the flood history um, within West Quarter. So that's what prompted Falkirk Council to commission a flood study in the area. Um, there have been three significant flood events, um, the 1990 and 2015 and 2020, and that's some of the photos that we can see um, on your screen just now from the 2020 event. Um, as I said, the public consultation, the exhibition event was held previously um, at the end of 2021, um, and that was where we went over some of the, the baseline flood mechanisms um, and outlined where we thought the flood risk was coming from. Uh, a little bit on the process of a flood study. So um, stage one, we, we gathered um, information that would help us um, help inform the flood study. So that was things like previous flood studies, flood history um, and some um, catchment um, characteristics. Uh, this then led us on to the next stage, stage two, where we spent some time looking at mapping um, and the, um, the catchment to try and determine the inflows into the model that would be built in the next stage, which was stage three. So here um, a topographic survey was commissioned um, and we used that to develop a computer model off the river and the floodplain through West Quarter. Um, this meant that we could identify the, um, the flood routes and map mechanisms for a range of events. And it meant that we could produce what we call baseline mapping, which shows the flood risk as it is just now. Uh, the next stage, stage four, um, 
is when we look at options to try and mitigate the flood risk that was identified in the previous stage. So we look at um, baseline assessments for social and environmental um, and economic um, assessments and we um, score and rate the options that we've identified to try and form our shorter list, more condensed list of um, options that we might want to take forward. The final stage, which is the stage we're at now, stage five, is where we produce the final reporting um, and set out our recommendations for managing flood risk uh, into the future for West Quarter. A little bit on the terminology um, that we'll use throughout this presentation. So um, we'll talk about floods in relation to annual exceedance probability, and this is a percentage. So it means how likely a flood is going to occur in any given year. So the example here on the screen is shown that uh, a 1% flood event has a 1% chance of occurring or being exceeded in any one year. Uh, another term that we will use throughout the presentation in relation to the options is standard of protection. And this is the degree of protection um, that a flood mitigation option will provide. So again, for example, a 1% a AAP standard of protection will protect the properties up to and including the 1% AEP event. Uh, here is just one of the flood maps that we produced as part of the baseline flood modelling. So this is the 2% AAP event, so um, a relatively large event, um, and it's basically showing that the areas to the east, um, the pink areas have the greatest depths, and the lighter blue areas to the west, that's where the, the lower flooding occurs on the floodplain through West Quarter. The flood mechanism, um, which is shown to occur through all of the events that we modelled, it shows that flood waters first come out upstream of the Pullman Road culvert, where the area of pink is just now, um, and it backs up in that kind of grassy area. Um, then flow starts to come out at various points along Langton Road um, and travels um, eastwards to, to join the um, the floodplain flow that's already in that pink area identified on the map. Um, as you can see, the, the flooding is fairly um, substantial and the depths um, you know, are reaching up to around uh, two metres on the, the eastern side of uh, West Quarter. We start the um, the option development process by creating a long list of options. Um, so this is basically assessing all types of options that could be carried forward um, to the, um, the appraisal stage. So we've just got a couple of examples here of the kind of range of, of options that we looked at. So they range from more engineered options like flood walls and embankments um, to dredging to property level protection um, and uh, structure um, alterations or improvements. I will pass you on to Scott now, who's going to discuss some of the, um, the elements of refining the options that we have carried out since the previous consultation event. So we appraised the long list based on uh, technical, legal, financial and environmental impacts. And this produced a short list of the most viable options. And before we have a look at those options, um, the ones on screen at the moment are the ones that were discounted, so the ones that weren't taken forward. Um, so that includes Pullman Road culvert alterations, um, a floodplain storage area in West Quarter, a floodplain storage area in Lythorn Woods, and downstream channel, channel realignment. And these weren't taken forward mainly just due to their um, little impact to flood risk. So we also had a look at dredging. Um, this was scored off our long list, but because of the positive response from the last exhibition event, uh, we decided to look at this in a wee bit more detail. So we did a wee bit more modelling around this. So we looked at two different scenarios, one where we lowered the bed by 0 0.5 metres, and one where we lowered the bed by 0 0.3 metres. And we did this for around about one kilometre of the burn. So that's the area highlighted in blue in the figure there to the left. 
And we ran this for the 4% and the 0.5% AP events. And this gave us a good range of events to see how it affects at less frequent and more frequent events. And what we found was that it really didn't have much of an effect on the flood risk in the West Quarter. Um, it had a little impact to the flood depths in the West End, but really in the East End where the most significant flooding was, it really didn't make a difference to any of the flood depths. So this option was not taken forward. However, we have said that localised sediment management may be appropriate to be taken by Fog Council on an ad hoc basis to manage any small scale sediment build up. So this is the short list of options that were modelled in a bit more detail um, before the economic assessment. So the short list um, comprises of four different flood wall and embankment options, uh, secondary channel or leaf culvert and property level protection. And the reason why we looked at four different flood wall and embankment options is because each one of them protects Westcore up to a different standard protection. So this means that the, the wall extents and heights will be different for each option, which will then result in different economic and social outcomes. So we'll have a look at these in a wee bit more detail now. So this is option 1A, and this is for a flood wall and embankment for the 4% AAP standard protection. So this protects in Westcore up to the 4% AAP event. I can see in the figure in the bottom left, these are the extents of the embankment and wall. So the, the line in red is the extent of the wall and the line in green is the extent of the embankment. And the reason why some areas of the embankment are wall and some are um, embankment is because of space constraints. Um, ideally, we would have um, embankment everywhere, but um, and, and this is because um, of um, costs and also because of um, it's less visually intrusive. Um, but because of space constraints, we can't have them everywhere. And so to protect Westcore up to the 4% AP standard protection, um, we would need a 250 metre long wall and a 105 metre long embankment, and this will a maximum height of 1.2 metres. And on the figure to the right, you can see the residual flood extent for the 4% AP event. So this is the flood extent once the wall has been put in place. Um, and the area highlighted in red there shows um, the area of West Coast that's been protected. So this is the area that used to flood at this event. So if we look at option 1B, um, this is for a flood wall and embankment for the 2% standard protection. Um, and as you can see in the figure to the left, um, the extent of the wall and the embankment have increased uh, slightly. So we're now needing a 368 metre long wall and 155 metre long embankment. And this is a maximum height of 1.6 metres. And again, you can see the flood map on the right. Um, this is showing the residual flood extent for the 2% AAP event. So you can see there's no flooding within West Court at this event, um, and we're protecting a slightly larger area. So option 1C is again for another flood wall embankment, but it's protecting West Court up to the 1% AAP event. And as you can see, in the figure on the left, the extent of the wall embankment have increased quite significantly. So we're now needing a 630 metre long wall and a 275 metre long embankment. However, you can see again on the figure on the right that we're protecting a much larger area of West Quarter um, as we're protecting up to the 1% AP event. However, one of the limitations with this option is really um, we need quite a, a high wall. We need a wall of 2.6 metres. Um, and this is really upstream of Car Holden Road Bridge. This is because this bridge causes a constriction. Um, that means uh, water backs up behind this structure, um, creating uh, high depths. So for option 1D, if we move on to the next slide, we again looked at flood wall embankments up to the 1% AEB standard protection, um, but this is also removing car holding road bridge, so removing this construction. And as you can see, the, the extents of the wall embankment have reduced um, slightly compared to option 1C. So we're now needing a 480 metre long wall and 115 metre long embankment with a maximum height of 2.2 of metres. And again, the, the, the flood map on the right shows that we're protecting the same area of the West Quarter as we were for, the, for option 1C. So option 6 is for a secondary channel. And this is constructing a 250 metre long channel, a secondary channel 
to the south of the burn between East Park Crescent Bridge and Carhoden Road Bridge. And this increases the capacity of the burn um, in this section. And really what we saw here, you see in the flood map on the right, this is for the 0.5% AP event, that really in the east and the west ends of West Square, the extents haven't really changed at all. Um, there's only really a benefit to the, the properties in the middle of West Square for this option. We also looked at a relief culvert, and this is constructing a two metre diameter relief culvert through Pullman Road Embankment, and this is to alleviate any backing up behind uh, Pullman Road Embankment, and quite a significant proportion of the, the flooding in the east end of the study areas because of this backing up. And what we saw, you can see in the figure on the right, that um, really extents didn't decrease at all. Um, however, the flood depths have decreased quite a bit. Um, so properties are still seeing flooding, however, to a lesser degree. And finally, we have a uh, property level protection, and this is providing protection to the properties themselves. So this is putting things like flood barriers or air, air brick covers, and some examples are there on your screen at the moment of, of the types of protection that we can have. And this protects properties up to flood depths of 0 0.6 metres. And for this option, we have currently targeted at 25 of the most significantly affected properties. However, there's potential to maybe increase this number. Um, the standard protection of these properties would then range between 10% AP and the 0.5% AP event. So some properties are seeing quite a, a substantial increase in their standard protection. And this is also supported by Scottish Flood Forum. So that is the short list of the options. Um, we then we then appraise all these options based on economic, social and environmental impacts. Um, so for the economic appraisal, we compared the economic benefit to the cost. And this included things like property damages, uh, cleanup costs, emergency services costs and options costs. And we also looked at social environmental impacts. So these are things such as health benefits, social vulnerability, war, ecological heritage, air, soil, climatic factors and standard protection. And the reason that we looked at social environmental impacts also was um, so the appraisal wasn't biased towards economic. So um, a property, uh, an option might have the best economics, however, uh, socially and environmentally, it might not be the best option. So if we go on to the next slide, we will see the results of the economic appraisal. So for each option, as you can see on the screen, um, each option has a benefit cost ratio, and this is the ratio of the total expected damages avoided as a result of the option versus the cost. So really the higher the benefit cost ratio, the better. Any option that's over one, the benefit is outweighing the costs. And what we can see from this was that actually only one option has a benefit cost ratio above one, and that's relief culvert. However, although this option does have the highest economic return, it doesn't provide uh, standard protection for West Quarter. And this, this is what we saw a couple of slides back um, where the extent hasn't reduced, um, but the, the depths of flooding has reduced. So properties are still seeing flooding, but to a lesser degree. So for this reason, we have not taken this forward as a recommendation. And likewise for the secondary channel, um, it's not showing the best um, economic impact. So we've got a benefit cost ratio of 0 0.65, and it's also only benefiting a couple of properties in the middle of West Quarter. So this also wasn't taken forward as a recommendation. So what we found was that the flood wall embankment and the property level protection were the better of the options. Um, out of the flood wall embankment options, option 1B, which is protecting West Court up to the 2% AOP event, um, showed the best benefit cost ratio at 0 0.88. So this option was one of our recommendations. The other recommendation was for property level protection, and this is because we're targeting at 25 of the most significantly affected properties in West Gore, and some properties are seeing a much higher standard protection compared to other options. So they made up our recommendations uh, for the flood study, and really the next steps is for Falkirk Council to use this study to make decisions based on um, decisions on flood risk management going forward. So I will pass you back over to Hannah. 
Thank you, Scott. Um, so that's it from um, ACOM's presentation just now. And yeah, I'll just hand you back over to Gary at the Council. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Scott and Morag also for your presentation. So um, first and foremost, I'll talk you through what our next steps are. So um, obviously there was quite a lot to take in for everybody there, but what um, we're looking to do for our next steps in, in West Quarter is we're first and foremost going to look at any quick wins. So um, we've carried out water course inspections for all our water courses in the area, um, the Falkirk Council boundary. What we're going to do now is analyse those and carry out any maintenance required on those sections of water courses. So it's possible that we'll carry out you know, vegetation clearance. Like Scott had, had commented on the dredging um, idea, um, is not doesn't it make any real benefit. So um, that's possibly one that we won't look at. However, you know we're, we're up, it's up for discussion. So um, we'll analyse the full asset stock of the water courses um, and we'll carry out necessary works this financial year or next, depending on priority for those. Um, we're also drafting a, a committee report to local council for the executive in late 2022, which will include the options that the ACOM have just spoke about. Um, in the area and, and will obviously detail the finance required within um, for these works. So our budgets don't allow us to carry out everything um, across the council boundary. There's obviously substantial fees within those, um, some of those options. So we're going to need to go to the, the council and, and ask for um, for their capital funding for these, these projects. Um, and then we're also due to prioritise surface water management plans um, across the full Falkirk Council area um, after our current pilot scheme, um, that which may then include West Quarter in the future. So I'll now open up the, the floor to questions. Um, obviously, we can use the, the chat function or the, the raise hand function um, in Teams. Yep, Adana McHugh. Hi Gary, um, uh, thanks for tonight. I've got a couple of questions. First off, I don't see any of our elected members at this meeting. I don't see any MSPs or MPs at this meeting, so there's no political representation here. And obviously it's them that push for the funding for all this. So were they invited? Yes, I can. Invited? There's a new council just been put in place. So maybe the new councillors haven't been invited. So I, I can confirm that all the new councillors um, in the in the area have been invited, and that there is actually MSP um, in the, within the within the teams two, two, two MSPs. Yep. So there is as an MSP on the line. Yes, That's yep. because I think uh, we maybe need to press, given that uh, our local councils are very strapped for for funding. We need to be pressing on our MSPs to get us funding. Because as uh, everyone will be aware, all the, the residents in West Quarter, uh, the horrendous uh, pressures that they've been under, and I think this needs to be getting pushed along as quick as possible. Um, and I also wanted to ask why there isn't anybody for housing and communities represented this evening, because obviously anything we do in that area, they do in that area, uh, they will be part of. And there's also, I believe, um, there's some kind of plan going ahead to clear the woods at the back of Langton Road because of the water that comes down and the, the trees and, and vegetation that comes down into the back of uh, these people's houses. And I wondered if we've looked at any of that. Thanks. That's yeah, all so, please. No, thank you. Um, no, we're, um, I think we're, we're fully aware of um, some things. However, I'm not aware of the the clearance of the vegetation at the back, so um, I'll need to ask around in that, maybe plan an environment. However, um, housing were also in, um, invited as well, Adana, so um, we, anything that does get passed around, you know, we we'll always pass all communications throughout all relevant um, departments in the council, be it housing, be it roads maintenance, be it planning and environment, um, as well as obviously the local councillors and, um, and MSPs. Okay. Thanks very much. Just just to say, Gary, I believe that the housing officers have been in and about West Court and they actually are telling people that have a, uh, that are in Langton Road that there's going to be a joined up thinking between housing and development services, police services, uh, as to how they're going to manage the back gardens and the vegetation. Right, OK. It's possible that they've spoken to roads maintenance, obviously, that maybe around the, around about the drainage system in that area. Um, they've not spoken to me personally, um, but we will. I'll make every effort I can to, to discuss that with, with housing. 
That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rachel Nunn. Thank you. I'm here representing Stephen Kerr, um, MSP. Um, so question around the funding. Gary, is this would this be put into the 2228 uh, funding bid? And yeah. can you update? Because I I had understood that all the funding that had been allotted to that <clears throat> that group of projects has now been rescinded because this group of projects has gone run. So, so that's my that's my first question. <laughs> um, I'm going to say my second one, and then you can come back and answer them both. Uh, the second one is for ACOM. So, at the beginning of your slides, you showed us uh, water depths. Uh, we had the pink, and then the purple, and the blue. Um, do you have such a slide a, a slide showing the water depths after the 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 construction of the wall and the em embankment? And would you mind just going back to that and showing what is still un underwater for the, the residents and, and how deep that water um, is? And also I'd find it really helpful to know the, the, the cost per household for the interventions that are on the at property level. So sorry, that's that's three questions. <laughs> No, no, that's fine. Um, so I'll answer your first one, Rachel, if that's okay. So, um, and then I think I should be able to answer your second one as well. I've got um, ACOM's presentation up here. So, um, in terms of funding, so there's obviously our capital and revenue funding will not allow any of these major works um, for a fund at the moment. So, and there's no current finance um, mechanism for that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Falkirk Council initially. Um, and ask for a, a further capital bid on that. Um, so that could possibly include for, um, you know, bringing forward some of our capital bid, bid for um, 23, 24, 24, 25 possibly. Um, and then we may need to go to Scottish, Scottish Government after the after. If we, you know, the, 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 the fees within these projects, some, um, I'll give you a wee bit of background on this. So my background is bridge and structural design. So, um, you know, if we were replacing a large structure, for instance, we were able to bring money forward for financial years to, to cover larger projects such as this. So that's a possibility and that's the first possible first thing we're going to look at. Um, and then we'll need to look down other avenues. So, so sorry, could I just ask, I, I'm sorry to be dense about this. My, my understanding is that normal flooding, um, flood protection schemes go in groups. So we had a group up to 2022. And and then we had a group that's from 2022 to 2028. Are you saying that this is a is a completely different thing and it will be resourced in a completely different way? That, to be honest, is, is something that's going to be have to be answered by, by the local members, to be honest, Rachel. Um, you know, if, if they see that this this is a priority, um, this, they would need to look at the financing avenues for that. OK. Sorry, you can carry on with the rest of my questions. I know that's right. So that you you were asking about the the flood map after the the flood walls and embankments. Yeah, the depth of the water particularly, and what is what is still covered. Um, so I can show you this one for for the ACOM presentation. I don't, it doesn't how? really cover the, the depth, however. But... Is ACOM able to to tell us then, please? Uh, I don't have the depths to hand, but um, so it, you know that mapping there is basically showing that there there isn't any flood depth in property but by blocking areas that previously used to flood the flood depth in the grassy area to the east for example will be higher than it was or is currently for the same event so the depths will be increased in those sort of recreational areas but obviously the flood risk has been removed from the properties up to that 2% AEP standard of protection. OK, and are there roads covered there? I, I can't quite see. All yeah, yeah, so the roads are protected as well, obviously, with there just being one route in. Um, it's a, a more unusual situation than some, maybe. Um, so the, the defences that are um, put in place as part of this option, they would have um, raising off the bridge decks and um, elements like that so that water can't get onto the bridge and then, you know, spill down the roads. So it does include um, protection off the access um, and exit from the area as well. And and where on there are, are the 25 homes that are most at risk? The ones that would 
also get um, flood protection on that on that map. So are you talking about the property level protection? Because wasn't it both both? You were going to this. Oh, so sorry, guys. <laughs> that no, this no, that's solution, right. That this solution is the two things together. Isn't no, that? so actually they're two separate options. Um, so oh, it okay. is that it's the the sort of engineering um, wall and embankment option um and then there's the the property level protection option which like a, would be like not together yeah uh -huh, two separate options yeah okay, sorry I'm... no 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 that's fine it's yeah there's quite a lot to take in um the um the 25 properties are located around the the eastern side of of west quarter but as um scott said you know this is a, a high level conceptual design stage just now and and it would be looked at in more detail um, and the properties would need surveyed and all of those sort of things. So there, there is potential for that number to to change um, and for additional properties to be to be added into that if it was beneficial. And so so there's two questions that stem from there. One, which is the what is the per property price of property level protection? And two, what kind of warning do how how long a warning period do people have to install that property level protection? Uh, yep. So the the property level protection that's costed for just now within our analysis, um, I can't remember offhand what it is per house, but it's the it's the the premium um, property level protection that's installed. So you get different sort of grades of of property level protection. Um, we can get back about the specific cost per property. Um, I'm not sure of it offhand, but um, uh, and in relation to the warning, um, I think that that's something that um, Falkirk Council have already been looking into because there is the the gauge um, at the one of the western bridges, which has been looked at in relation to trying to give early warning as to when an event might be occurring. I know that we've looked at the, the threshold levels and how those might be changed and how the roads um, team are updated about that so that more early warning can be given. Because you're right, you know, PLP only works if you're given warning to actually install it, um, which is obviously a limitation of the option. Um, but trying to establish a better forecasting system would be um, a sort of essential element of PLP. Just a minor point on the end of that. Thanks, Morag. It's just that there are some options for PLP that can sort of come into play automatically when flood levels are at the property. So the, these are just some various pictures, but you know there's a whole range of products out there. But so, for example, the door that's pictured there is a door that would be in place all of the time and be designed um, to prevent flooding accessing the property that way. And um, some of the air brick options mean that they sort of close as water um, approaches that gets to that level of the property. So there are options that work automatically. Obviously, then they tend to come with a higher cost and then some that um, are required to be put in place and then and then removed. So it would be something that would be developed if the project product, um, if sorry, if the option was taken further. Um, but there are, you know, the, there's obviously reasons why people might not be able to get out and put them on their property. You know, they could be away or um, you might not physically be able to to move these types of things. So, yeah, there's certainly um, lots of different options out there depending on what um, works for different properties and different people. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, Carol Rayburn, please. Hi, thanks very much, uh, Gary, for uh, allowing me to uh, attend this evening. So my name is Carol Rayburn and I'm um, from the Scottish Flood Forum. So just picking up on the property level protection, part of the service that we provide is to carry out individual home assessments or and to recommend the um, property protection that is most appropriate for, for each house and for each individual. So um, as was stated there, uh, you've got a variety of, of options and we'd be working with uh, the council to make sure that that was the most appropriate options for each individual home. Because um, 
for example, air brake covers. We, it's been talked about the automatic ones who automatically deploy um, in the event of, of flooding. Um, and again, you know, if you've got three air brake um, entry points into your property, then you're going to need three of those. So it's a it's about a blended um, suite of devices and options for um, each individual property um, that we'd be considering. I think the other thing to point out in terms of, not just in terms of the, the local devices which can alert, there's Floodline as well, and the uh, SEPA have recently launched the Scottish Flood Forecasting Service. So there are a number of uh, ways that people can get in information about those serious weather um, serious weather events that uh, could be um, posing a risk. So again, that's uh, part of the information uh, package that we can work with with the individual homeowners um, to ensure that they're as well informed and as well prepared as as possible. Thank you. Thanks very much, Carol, for your attendance and for your information. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hey, Joe Godwin. Hello, um, I'm representing the director of the Fourth Rivers Trust, um, and so I'm going to just um, make a, a comment on the environmental aspect of the scheme. If that's if there's no other questions, um, I was just wondering. Um, I, I under, we understand that natural techniques will not. They, they will not um, create um, an impact um, short term on flood risk. But I was just wondering, is any consideration being given to natural techniques upstream? And I was thinking perhaps in, in combination with uh, hard engineering or property level protection, um, it may be that um, by the time property level protection comes to maintenance or replacement, that um, certain natural techniques may um, have possibly even even reduce the flood risk and I was just wondering at this stage do you consider that at all? Yeah, thanks Joe I'll probably pass you on to you Cormie it's been considered in a long list I think. Uh, yep so yeah we did consider um, NFM there was a, um, a, an NFM study undertaken as part of uh, the flood study um, where the entire catchment um, of the Glenburn and the West Quarter Burn was looked at. Um, I think due to the the topography and the current land use, there wasn't um, a significant amount of um, potential for natural flood management measures. Um, but it was a recommendation kind of taken forward within the reporting that if Falkirk Council wanted to, or there was there was funding for it, that it could be looked at further. Because you're right, you know, in combination with with more structural engineered things that are required for large scale flooding, um, they can be quite um, effective at the lower um, flooding events. So it, it was considered, um, unfortunately, couldn't provide something by itself, but it, it you know recommended that catchment improvements are undertaken because effectively that, you know, affects the runoff and um, and the water entering the channel. So. It, it has been, it's been, yeah, it's been recommended, but unfortunately not as a um, a standalone option. Well, I'm very glad to see that consideration has been given to NFM. Um, if if not, uh, not that they won't be continued at this point, but it has been considered. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, Joe. Is there any further questions? Quiet. Um, if there's no further questions, we'll, we'll move on. So, um, probably just to touch on last but not least, was as, as a wee bit of concluding statement. So, um, you know, I'm obviously pretty new to the flooding um, team in Falkirk Council, but you know, we want to work with the residents and the local members in West Quarter and, and find a solution that's that's feasible and for everyone. Um, 
However, like I said earlier, you know, we're going to need to go to councillors and, and the powers that be for the finance of the scheme. Um, so in the meantime, I've, I've put up a couple of contacts. Um, I've been past the contact centre at Scottish Water. Um, there's the Scottish Flood Forum that, forum that, that Carol's discussed. There's also the um, the SEPA and flood line, like Carol mentioned. Um, there's a contact centre at the Forward Council and there's obviously our flood and at flood.gov.uk um, email address. So um, please feel free to um, email us in any queries, concerns of, of anything that we, you know, we've discussed tonight. Um, our team is currently depleted at the moment. However, um, we will be able to answer your, your queries or concerns or questions at some time. Um, so I think um, if that's if there's no further questions, we'll, we'll conclude the, the public information event. Carol, sorry. Um, yeah, just to say to um, folks that are, are on this uh, call this evening, Scottish Flood Forum does also um, offer more than just property level protection advice. If you have any queries regarding your insurance um, and any policies, because um, we know that some insurance companies, um, when they learn that you're in a and an area that has experienced uh, flooding um, may change the goalposts uh, a bit for you. We can help with that. There are a number of schemes and, and there's a campaign at the moment called Build Back Better, which I think is useful to know about. So um, please get in contact with us. Um, best bet is through admin at scottishfloodforum.org and you can speak to a member of my team who will be happy to help you with any inquiries. So, do, you know, we're there to support you in any way we can. Thank you. Thank Carol, you, Carol. Do you have, sorry, Carol, do you have any space left on your June uh, meeting in Perth? Uh, yes, I do. Um, that's, a, that's a good shout. So uh, we have obviously working from home, so apologies for the background noise. Um, so uh, we have an event in June in Perth, um, which uh, we will have a representative from Flood Ray who operates an umbrella scheme, uh, which is designed to um, make insurance to properties that have been impacted by flooding more affordable. And so there's more about uh, the Build Back Better scheme and what that can mean in terms of future resilience. So please get in contact with us. Uh, happy to um, see anybody there, any householder, any elected members, um, contact us for more information. So yeah, please get in contact. Thanks, Carol. Um, Rachel? Um, Carol, uh, Lee, would it be all right for Carol and yourself and me to stay on the line afterwards just to pick up um, on, on that on that point and talk about also Earth, obviously. Would that, is there time to do that? It would be five minutes. If it's only five minutes. It will, I promise you. <laughs> OK, thanks. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, like I said, if there's if there's no further questions, um, we'll call a halt, halt to this evening's event. Um, thank you very much all for coming, and um, hopefully you'll hear for, from us very soon on our next steps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Anne. Bye.